Hi guys, welcome to the video. Are you still planning warehouse delivery routes manually? In today's video, I will show you how to create a fully functional warehouse route optimization model in Excel, complete with the distance, travel time, service time and automatic sequencing. Even you can optimize the sequencing with the help of solver. By the end, you will be able to generate optimized delivery route with just a few clicks. In this video, we will talk about multiple tables which will be in use in order to create this kind of dashboard and all the analytics behind it. First is the input data matrix. In the input data, you will be defining what's your stops and then what their address, their latitude and longitudes, and then uh, what is the demand unit you want to serve and then uh, how much time it will take in order to get it delivered. Then you will be having a distance matrix. You will be calculating that uh, each of the uh, stop uh, is how far from the other stop. And then you will be having certain uh, key KPIs or key data input uh, in order to calculate multiple KPIs, then you will be doing a root sequencing that at that uh, which stop you should choose after uh, a previous one and how much time it is going to take and what are the timelines accordingly. And then you will be having a violation table in which you will be checking that whatever route you have selected, does this violate any of the uh, key timings? And if it is, then what are the lateness? Uh, likewise. Then there is a sheet where we are talking about uh, uh, the optimization of this uh, whole sequencing which we have selected. Can we optimize it? And there is a detailed description how you can do it uh, by the uh, Excel solver. Even uh, it is so detailed that you can check that uh, we are talking about uh, in which cell you should write which formula. And then there are certain calculation for uh, the KPI uh, dashboard which we are uh, using in the first tab this one okay so let's start so first of all let us uh, check about the input data so in the input data we need to list down that what are the stops this warehouse sir what is their address and then their latitude and longitude i will uh, talk about that why these are uh, required and then usually what the demand is and then how much time does it take in order to serve them so we have three columns here one is service time Another is ready time. Third is due time. So what the service time means? Service time means the average duration required to complete the delivery or pickup activity. And it also include unloading the goods, paperwork, scanning items and getting signatures. Now, the second thing is ready time. So what is the ready time? It is the earliest time a stop is available to receive the delivery or pickup. So this helps you to schedule your deliveries that, okay, if something you uh, want to deliver first, then how early that location is available to receive the goods. Third is the due time. Due time is something, uh, the latest allowable time by which a delivery or pickup must be completed. So this means that let's say after uh, 6 p.m., uh, this location will not receive anything. So you need to deliver from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. And then you have a priority, which is high, medium and low. Okay, so first you are good with this kind of setup of your data you know that what are the deliveries you need to do and uh, now you want to uh, check that how far these stops with each other okay so for that we will go to the distance matrix uh, tab so here we are using the hair sign uh, formula which is a very famous one in order to uh, calculate the distance between two uh, location on the globe so this is the formula which is a co cosine formula which is a, a, a angle basically uh, this is calculating an angle between two locations by the help of latitude and the longitude uh, numbers and this 6371 is a, a radius of earth so it just creates you know a, a distance between two locations by multiplying that so yeah because this is in kilometers so uh, the distance which we are getting here are in kilometers so it is very easy to create. So I'm just using the same formula here. I am using a min and max in uh, order to, uh, you know, just ensure that the value of uh, the cosine should remain between one and minus one because uh, uh, the value of uh, cosine function uh, remain in between that only. And uh, there are chances by using the sine and cos formula here. Uh, it may go uh, beyond uh, minus one and plus one. So yeah, just to ensure it anyway. So right now what we have done that okay this is a matrix where we have uh, the stops here and the stops here as well and here you will be writing down the same formula 
and just to check out uh, let's say deport uh, to stop one the distance is 6.28 kilometer so yeah i think we just uh, taking certain data from the previous tab and putting it here now uh, in order to calculate or make a decision that okay uh, which stop you need to serve first you need to do some basic uh, uh, calculation or some basic assumption you i must say that what is your average speed and then what is your buffer per stop let's say you have uh, 30 minutes in a stop but there is a chance that it may get late so you just want to put some buffer on that stop which is a let's say 5 minutes uh, on each stop and then you will be having cost per kilometer uh, in order to uh, optimize your uh, cost and then you will be having a driver cost as well so yeah so till now all of the work was required in order to uh, having the basic data to create our calculations okay so now after having all of these data you will be moving to the route sequencing table so in this table what we do we have the sequence at which we want to serve our customers with the stops then you will be having this uh, column c where you will be having a uh, what's the previous stop and then what is the distance from the previous stop to this current stop what's the travel time then what is the arrival time by the time value then what is the service time and what is the departure time okay so then you will be uh, checking that how much uh, kilometers i have covered in this day in order to serve all of these and then how much is the cumulative time and then what are the demand unit which i have served okay how much uh, consignment units uh, i have served in this particular logistic route so this is a manual table so let's say uh, you want to serve a uh, stop to first and then you will be selecting yeah stop to stop to whatever it is so let's say i will be doing it for the stop 4 uh, it will be saying that okay this is the arrival time and this is the uh star servicing time so this kind of stuff it will come so how this arrival time is coming if you check the depot uh, from depot to uh stop 4 uh, the thing is uh distance is 17 km and if you calculate by your uh, average speed you will get around 26 minutes so that is why uh arrival time is 826 but why it is 826 because you are starting your day at 8 and it is taking 26 minutes but the start time is 10 so that is why your departure time will be 10 10 of the 10 minute service so there is a problem because you have depart from 8 am only so you need to wait here correct so what's your wise decision is you need to check all of your input and how early you can serve any of your customer so here we can see that uh, you can select stop 5 correct as early as possible so i think uh, uh selecting stop 5 at first make more sense so you will arrive at 828 and you can start your servicing from 830 okay so as soon as you are going to select any other uh, option after the earlier selection uh all the previous stop and the distance and the travel time and the arrival time will also get updated so what is happening here uh the time is getting added from the last departure time So this is how you can create a sequence, and you will also get that how much distance uh, you have covered, and then how much time you have consumed in serving all of these. Now, after giving all of these uh, manual inputs to the planner, you can check that in giving all of these input, am I violating any of the timelines? Uh, if I go here, so here I have a violation sheet. so in the sheet we check whenever we are servicing any of the stop it should be between the start servicing time and before the due time if this condition is meeting then we can say uh, there is no violation so just to tell you if i go to the input data and for the stop 6 let i so just to show you uh, let me move this to uh, 10 for the stop 6 if i go to the violation i can say okay this is late okay it will automatically get updated and this is late by 29 minutes so this is how i can check whatever sequence i have uh, created is it uh, following the the timelines of that particular station so this is how you can create uh, a manual logistic planner sheet in which you will be having the visibility to the start time end time how much kilometer you have covered how much time you have consumed and how much demand or how much consignment you have delivered
So let's move to the another uh, sheet where we can see that how you can optimize this sequencing with the help of Excel Solver. So here I would suggest that Excel Solver is, is not that powerful. So there are various software available in the market who can do this, but, but some sort of a small optimization which you can do by the Excel. So here is a detailed explanation how you can use it. If you want me to create a video around it, just command Excel tutorial on Solver. I will try to create it. Okay, here uh, just to explain you uh, how it is uh, going to work. It is explaining you that from which sheet you have to take which formula. And uh, here, let me just tell you that here we have the whole time. We need to minimize the time. And this is the whole quantity which we are delivering. This unique check is checking that we are not serving any of the stop twice. And uh, there are some other uh, nuances to it in order to create this kind of optimization with the Excel solver. I still don't suggest to use the Excel solver because it is going to take too much time. In the solver itself, you need to select uh, solving method as evolutionary because that only can handle the non-linear functions. Okay. Anyway, so you can give it a try and uh, it can help you to uh, create an optimized one, but yeah, it is going to take time because Excel usually take time in order to solve the non-linear problems. Now moving ahead to the another sheet, which is dashboard uh, calculation sheet. Here I am calculating certain KPIs, like how much distance I am covering, correct? How much time we are spending? How much stops I have served? What's my capacity utilization? Then what is the on-time delivery day? So as I was telling you, uh, if uh, right now you can see that everything is 100% is the on-time delivery date. If again, uh, if I go uh, to this sheet and uh, move uh, uh, this to, let's say uh, something like uh, 10, as soon as I'm moving this to 10, uh, the violation is screen will uh, light up and it will say that, okay, there is a late delivery. And because there is a late delivery, if I go to the dashboard, I can see that on-time delivery rate is down by 7%. So this is how it's a dynamic dashboard. You can check that uh, how much time you are distributing across the stops. What is your total distance, total time, how much stop you have served, what's the capacity utilization and the on-time delivery. And this is a visual uh, view in which you can see that, okay, how the things are piling up in terms of time, which are in minutes. You will get this sheet in the description with a very minimal price. And if you like this video, please like, share and subscribe and you can comment your topic on which you want an excel tutorial thanks